It's two shows in one. The Superhero Comic-Con and Car Show, August 4th through the 7th, in San Antonio at the Freeman Expo Hall. Presented by Thomas J. Henry. It's a Comic-Con with stars like Ewan McGregor, Haley Atwell, Simu Liu, Giancarlo Esposito, wrestling superstar Hulk Hogan, Arrows Stephen Amell, Dave Bautista, and many more. Plus a massive Hollywood car show with 45 awesome cars like Batmobiles and Transformers Optimus Prime. Tickets available at pmxevents.com. Pickle, let's go to the hotline. Let's go actually just up the road, just up 121 to Frisco to talk with the head coach of the Frisco Wakeland Wolverines. We're joined by Coach Chan Eisen. Coach, how are you? I'm well, Greg. How are you? I'm great. How are things up the road in Frisco? Well, it's a little uh, little cold and dreary today, but but other than that, we're we're doing here. Yeah, not a whole lot to complain about, I would imagine, up there in um, in, in, in at Wakeland. Uh, you're coming off of your first season at the helm. We made the joke earlier that you're the you're the only person uh, to ever coach a game at Frisco Wakeland not named Marty Secord. Um, <laughs> uh, now that that first year is in the rear view, um, I'm interested in how you would assess what you guys were able to do in the 2022 season. Well, looking back on the 2022 season, obviously we, we had a little bit of a slow start. Um, but you know, just the, the ability of our kids to overcome adversity and just the resiliency that they showed early on to kind of overcome that one and three start and kind of right the ship. And, you know, it seemed those first few games where, you know, one side of the ball would play pretty well and the other side might've struggled a little bit. And then, um, you know, kind of that, that second half of the reading game was a real turning point where our, our, our kids really stepped up and, and answered the bell and, we kind of got things rolling after that, so it was, it was definitely a, a year of, of adversity, but our kids were, were able to adapt and overcome for sure. Uh, and and you guys make it to the area round of the playoffs, and uh, you run into to Port Arthur Memorial and uh, play just a ho hum, real boring football game that I'm sure <laughs> didn't cost you any gray hair. Uh, a, a triple overtime thriller. You guys come up on the short end of it. I'm interested now that kind of the off season has started for you guys uh, to be so close to. Uh, a regional semifinal and and to basically come within a play of a regional semifinal is that something you guys are talking about are you guys using that as as fuel heading into the off season oh absolutely you know this is coming off this year was our our first year in school history with back to back playoff wins and mm-hmm. uh, and so now setting that standard of getting to the playoffs and winning in the playoffs that's really been our been our drive and been our focus. Um, you know, as soon as that, that game was over and uh, the bus drive on, on the way home, we had a lot of time to think about that, um, you know, after after that loss and driving home from Lufkin and just kind of how that would drive us, um, you know, heading into off season. Talking with Chan Eisen, the head coach at Frisco Wakeland here on Texas Football Today. Get involved in the conversation, hashtag TF Today. Um, but, but before we leave 2022, I know you've got two guys who are, are you got a number of guys heading off to the next level, uh, and a couple of them are, are pretty big names. One of them, Connor Stroh, your big offensive lineman heading to the University of Texas. And then Trip Reardon, your, your tight end heading uh, down the road uh, to the boulevard on, at SMU. Um, I'm interested what you can what you can gl- tell uh, folk, Longhorns fans and Ponies fans, about the, the guys they're getting getting from up in your neck of the woods yeah well first connor stroh man he he was an anchor for us for sure um it, it was definitely a tendency of ours that we were going to run to the left quite a bit and uh, i don't make any apologies about that because he's one heck of a player and he's a he's a great leader and i had a chance to to run into him uh, a few weeks back and you know he, he graduated early and has been down in austin and he's been working hard and he looks great and i know he's uh, he's got a bright future ahead of him and then uh you know trip Trip was just a, a real go-getter. You know, he was uh, been on the varsity for several years and really kind of came into his own his senior year and was able to do some miraculous things with the football. Um, we kind of jokingly say sometimes that well, Trip was just doing Trip things because he was he's one of those special players and we're really proud of those guys and the things that they did for Wakeland football. Um, can't thank them enough, and they're going to be heading down the road to Austin and then to Dallas to do great things for those programs. Uh- and but heading into the the cupboards far from bare, we actually just did a, a whole segment about about the top returning passers in the state of Texas, and and Brennan Meyer, uh, your your quarterback, is the eighth returning passer in all of the state of Texas uh, after throwing for nearly thirty five hundred yards last year. The numbers are uh, are shocking uh, what he was able to do last year offensively. But as the guy who is in film study with him, as the guy who's in practice with him, the guy who gets to know him, uh, what is it about Brennan Meyer that really sets him apart that makes him special 
Well, whenever you're able to throw for 3,500 yards, it's not by accident by his trusty <laughs> imagination. Um, what everybody doesn't see is the time that he uh, that he spends in film study behind the scenes on his own with coaches coming in with a list of questions um, that he has and things that he's seeing and just his his ability to very quickly dissect a defense um, is something that that really really special about him and uh, and on top of that he has all the physical tools you know so you, you add the, the mental piece that he can bring to the game and you add the physical tools that he has and then you have a, a great season like he did with you know throwing for almost 3,500 yards and as you said, being one of the top passers in the state, and uh, we're very fortunate to have him back and have him at the helm, and we have some some pretty good pieces on offense to put around him that are coming back as well, and some experience up front a little bit. So we're excited about Brendan's senior season. You know, it's it's interesting, Coach, because um, I think that you know Wakeland and, and I think maybe even Frisco ISD football to, uh, to begin with is they they have so many offensive playmakers it's, it's easy to get wowed but I look at the the program that coach Secord built and that you're continuing there at Wakeland you helped to build uh and and it does seem like to me the you guys are always putting out a quality defensive product out there and yeah the you know the, the, there's going to be offensive fireworks so it's going to be fun to be had offensively but defensively there is a certainly an identity there with with the, with the Wolverines, um, looking forward to this 2023 defense, do you feel like that is going to be able to continue off of what was a really strong defensive year uh, in, in 2022? Uh, yeah, the the defensive staff that we have that we have here at Wakeland is just is just awesome. You know, they're they're some of the best in the state, and one thing that they do a great job of is they they put their kids in position to make plays. Uh, and I know I'm an offensive guy, but I know at the end of the day that defense wins championships. And, you know, the ability uh, of our defensive staff and our defensive players to be able to hold opponents to, uh, you know, to low numbers and make big stops. That's one of the things that they really did real well this year was, um, you know, goal line stands or fourth and one got to have it stops. Um, they just they have a tenacity and they they just play with, with such uh, such raw emotion sometimes. Um, and take great pride in what they do and get the ball back for the offense. And so that's uh, that's definitely been one of our trademarks, and I expect that to continue into 2023 with you know playing outstanding defense. One last question for Chan Isom of Frisco Wakeland here on Texas Football Today, Coach. You, you guys are obviously um, you in District Six Five A Division One. You guys have the the really interesting uh, situation where you're just so intimately familiar with all of your district opponents. Uh, you know, not only are you guys playing uh, in a big district, so you're starting district play uh, right away with a nine-team district, but also you add into the fact that, you know, everyone except Sherman uh, is is a Frisco ISD, um, you know, uh, you know, bunkmate. And and I guess my question is, how do, how does that change your approach, knowing that there's just going to be fewer secrets between you guys, how do you how do you approach uh, you know district play, knowing that everyone's kind of got the book on everybody else? Yeah, it's a it's a challenge, and we kind of take it as that um, because there there aren't a whole lot of things that you can do that uh, that you haven't seen before, or they haven't seen before, and especially you know if you've been here for a little while, like a, a lot of us have here at Wakeland. You know, you get to know each other fairly well at the other schools. And, you know, we call it the Frisco factor out here where you, you always know that when you play another Frisco school, um, you're going to get a great effort from both sides. Um, you know, just that that in town rivalry piece of it is always there and just trying to be on your A game for every opponent that you're going to see because they uh, they know you really well and you know them pretty well and playing as many times as we have over the years. It's uh, it's definitely a challenge, but one that's uh, that's fun too because you get to, you know, kind of try to figure out the pieces again, you know, and or or you get another shot at somebody maybe that you uh, that, that beat you the year before. He's Chan Isom. He's the head coach of the Frisco Wakeland Wolverines. Coach, we sure appreciate your time. Congratulations on a fantastic first year at the helm there at Wakeland, and can't wait to see what you guys do in 2023. Sounds good. Thanks for the time, Greg.